everybody and welcome back i hope you all have had a wonderful weekend and are looking forward to the week ahead of you i hope you all are doing well i am doing okay um and uh <sighs> yeah anyway um before we get properly started um just want to remind you all Linktree and Patreon. Right down there. Linktree slash Crimson Knight, K R I M Z O N K N I G H T, and Patreon.com slash Crimson Knight, spelled the exact same way. Um, there are ways you can support me if you so choose um, and help me to continue to make my uh, content and even improve my content, uh, so on and so forth. But. Uh, there's no requirement there it's just if you feel like it you know um but anyway uh other than that um i decided not obviously decided not to take the week off um i will be taking a week off at some point in the next month or so um still working on when exactly and i will let you guys know when i have that date hammered down um but uh in the meantime, here we are. So, uh, yeah, enough of my rambling. Let's get back into Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So, before we get properly <coughs> stuck in, um, in the wrong menu, I have done some work. As you can see on screen, I have done some work. I have cleared out all of the districts that we been mainly having to deal with so far Whitechapel, City of London, Southwark and Lambeth I've started, I've done most of the Strand as you can see here, I only have a couple of places left <laughs> excuse me and I have not even touched Westminster in regards to um, gang activities and stuff like that um, <clears throat> I have saved the gang wars of both City of London and Southwark to do on stream. Um, I have done this lap race. I have done both races in the in Lambeth as well as won the Fight Club. I have done the Fight Club and both races in Southwark. <clears throat> I've done the Fight Club in the Thames. I have done the Fight Club and and won two races in the City of London. And of course, I already had cleared Whitechapel. Um, <clears throat> now, you might be wondering, well, Crimson, what is this train robbery? What is this train symbol here? Well, that's a train robbery. Uh, that mean that's an activity that we can do in order to up Ned Weinert's uh, little bar here. Um, also, that's the next thing I wanted to talk about. Actually, <clears throat> is the companion. I have done enough of these missions that we're on all on the final uh, on the final level uh, for each of them. So I only need to fill up these bars once more in order to, you know, actually get that final uh, thing from each of them. Um, and back to the burrows. So I, and also as for the collectibles, as you can see on the uh, left of the screen here, um, there I have all of the collectibles in Whitechapel, all of them in the city of London, all of them in the Thames, all of them in Southwark, and all of them in Lambeth. And I've started on, but have not finished the strand. Um, but you can see here that I got all of the, uh, the the music boxes. That's what these are in the strand. And so one of the things I want to do today is I want to get the final seven um, music boxes, which are all down here in Westminster. Um, I want to get those so that we can unlock 
that we can finish that and unlock and, and come up here to this and unlock what's in Rouge's vault. Um, so that's plan number one. Plan number two, this uh, dreadful crime investigation up here, as well as this Karl Marx memory over here. Um, and of course, plan number three is not necessarily, these are not necessarily in order, just so you're aware. But number three on my list is to do to knock out both of these gang wars. Um, now you might also be wondering, what's this? World War One, the darkest hour? It's a uh, it's a mission that takes place in the Fry future. Um, obviously, World War One. We're not there yet in the Industrial Revolution, but. Um, <clears throat> It, it's a thing that we'll do eventually. Um, it's not quite DLC, but it's also... It, it, it's a thing. We'll get there. Um, but, uh, yeah. Now, other things that I have done. Um, uh, as you can see here, I have almost all of the... Hey, Rose, good to see you. Yes, I am a jerk face. Uh, as you can see here, I have almost all of the perks. I have 97% of them. And that means I have all but one. As you can see here, I have completed all of the perks, but one. And this one is one of the hardest out there. Because it's a pain in the ass. Um, and with no easy way to just grind the numbers. Um, there is a there is a memory uh, in at one point which is really which apparently is really good for grinding this perk except um, I mean I am awesome but you spelt my name wrong when in doubt just look anywhere on my screen and you'll see that it's with a Z not an S. <laughs> anyway uh but yeah so basically i'll be getting that i do what i want sure you do um whatever whatever you say rose um but yeah I'll, I'll be taking care of this in time it's just we have to get a bit further in the game for, for this to become a bit easier um you can see here the total percentages um Oh, yes. Uh, before I forget, uh, gang upgrades are 100% completed now. Um, I was able to grind up the cash I needed to be able to upgrade these to completion, which means that we've got a bunch of stuff now that we didn't have before. So in addition to a decent sized income between and discounts between, you know, each of these things, um, we uh let's see here uh let's see there's more explosives around the city there's more crate the barrels hanging around the city um police will turn a blind eye to some of my illegal actions and the blighters won't just like be belligerent and start attacking me um, and ag be aggressive towards me as soon as they see me because they are a little bit afraid of me now. Um, also, we've sabotaged them all quite a bit. And we have now all three or all four uh, archetypes of, of uh, gang member. We have our normal ones. And then we have the Watchers, the Brutes, and the Enforcers. We have fully upgraded them, com complete with getting them up to level 9, which means they are a force to be reckoned with. Um, and we've got the ability to summon an entire carriage full of Rooks to come to my aid when I want, which is pretty great. Um, beyond that, <clears throat> oh, I'm not on the ground. Uh, so we'll get to that in a second. 
I finally have leveled up completely. We are at level 10. There are no, there is no more leveling up to be done. We have all of the skills unlocked. Jacob has all of his unlocked. It's just they're not showing it because I'm not Jacob at the moment. Um, and okay, fine. Swap over to Jacob just to show you that. Um, oh, wrong button. Skills. Uh, just to show you that I have those three skills unlocked. Um, now, oops, anyway, wrong button. Uh, it was crafting. We have oops, all of the upgrades except for this one, which comes from completing the story, from progressing the storyline further than we currently are. We have. I have crafted everything that I currently have the ability to craft. Everything else will come from either storyline progression or through exploration of Westminster, which, you know, I will... That's next on the list. Um, and uh, to that regard, I have also purchased... That means I have every weapon available, basically, is what I was going to say. Um, not all of them are upgraded because, you know, what's the point? They're not all ones that I will actually use. Um... But like, you know, uh, we also have all of the we also have the best assassin gauntlet at the moment. Um, there's one more, but it's not available yet. Um, we have the best currently available firearm, the best currently available cape and Jason, not Jason, Jacob. I think I called him Jason earlier as well, but Jacob has the best available belt equipment uh i have upgraded uh was it all of her gear all of her main outfits i have upgraded i have not i have did i upgrade, actually did i upgrade them all i upgraded them all okay except for the three we don't currently have um i have everything unlocked except for these three blah 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 so on so forth as i was saying um just for posterity's sake like i said best possible belt uh and also i did not upgrade his outfits because why should i waste the money on him when like i barely play as him like his, his outdoorsman outfit is all i really need you know so yeah um database we just have present day stuff we do not have all of the assassin intel yet um so once we have all of that then we'll go through those oh i forgot to swap back to the only assassin that actually matters out of the two of them um anyway so since we're here we're gonna grab oh, hello hello miss misery eight welcome welcome oh god what is happening Welcome, welcome. Hold on a second. Oh, I wondered. I was going to I wondered if that was you. I didn't want to assume. Uh, but I wondered if that was you. Thank you. I'm glad you could make it. Welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. How are you doing, Nat? Also, my friend, uh, the Queen is watching from Discord. Um, so, hello, the Queen. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to everybody who could make it. Dang. All right. 
So we got that one. Uh, there's one over here, which is actually marked. doing well I'm, i've been doing all right um today was a bit of a exhausting day but you know it is what it is been behaving yourself out there? Mm -hmm. Alright, that's two down. Now we have a flower here. I'll get the flower another time. Um... Next one is your ish. That's fair. It is, uh, it's one of my favorites. Um, and like, I mean, who am I kidding? I love the entire series. But, uh, it's one of- this one is one of my favorites out of all of them. Uh... And so, like, you know, it's definitely worth a pickup, as is the entire series. But, you know, if you don't pick up any of the others, this one you definitely want should. Don't run into the horse. Don't run into the horse. Am I going the right way? I am actually going the right way for once. Boy. No thief. Not right in front of me. Hell no. Also teach you a lesson. We won't teach nobody nothing. Oh bless you. Thank you so much. I just cannot tell you. Your place, our place. Pick it up. There you go. Okay, so we got those. We got, uh, let's see, we got that one. We got that one. We got this one. All the way over here. Around here. -ish. I'm gonna need myself a carriage. I require a horse and buggy. Did you, did you guys really have to just like take out that little post thing? Was that necessary? No. Easy. Stop. 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 Uh oh. Someone. Well, there goes one of my rooks. Oh well. It's fine. Uh yeah, as as I uh said right as ads started, so you might have missed it. It's definitely one that it's worth picking up. Um it, it has its glitches and its bugs, but you know many games do. So you know. But it is one of my favorites. And I highly recommend it. Come on! Come on! Move it! They 
though. Yeah. Yeah. The AC charm, absolutely. Alright, now. Now, 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 now. Come on. Where is it? Am I in the right spot? I think I am. I should be. Unless it's more to my right than I'm at. Let's try that. I love that I have a gang of people just following me around as I go for a walk in a park. <laughs> There it is. Did I ever tell you about the time I nearly journeyed to America with Wilkinson? Did you really? Oh, I was young and foolish. All right, that's the half of them. We have three more. All right. The last three are here ish here ish and the final one is down here ish assassin minion army you know that's how you know you're doing it right Another one, I, another one of the, uh, the assassin, another of the assassin games that I really, really love are, um, the two that fought, that came out of, after this game, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey. Um, they're also, like, it, the, my top five, basically. And one of the things I can't wait for is to be playing Origins and Odyssey on stream because they are both gorgeous games. Like, gorgeous games. Kitty! Sitting right next to the thing I need to pick up. Nice. Yeah, I... Oh, God, I need to look now how many hours I've put into it. Uh... Because I'm, I'm genuinely curious and don't remember how many hours I've put into it. Um... 281 hours. And that's just exploring and, you know, completing the storyline and all of the collectibles and all of everything, you know, 100% completion. That looks like a mess I should stay clear of. When we inevitably get to the game in on stream, we will not be spending 281 hours on it. Uh, we will be utilizing the new game plus feature where all of the stuff that I've already ground, like the levels and the abilities and the equipment and everything, all will, you know, carry over. We'll just be starting the story from scratch. And I intend to do essentially the same with Origins as well. There's what I'm looking for.
However, when we get to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, I have not played that game yet at all. So it'll be a completely fresh experience for me going in. And I am excited. Uno mar. Thank you for popping in, Yvonne. You should definitely rest. Um, Nat is in the chat. Uh, if you want to say hi to them, Yvonne, before you, you know, go and die. Hey, I'm going to borrow your carriage real quick. Let me just, you know. because I currently have three <laughs> that now means I have three of my crew in in chat that's funny Time to start a sesh right now. All right, roll for initiative. <laughs> no, 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 that's... No, no, we'll save it for this weekend. Now we have all of those, so let us make our way, making our way uptown. All right, we need to go there. Right? Uh, Queen, the Queen says, dang, love the music right then in uh, Discord. And yes, the musical cues in this game are right on point. In, in the Assassin's Creed games, the music is so beautiful, so gorgeous. Um, the, uh, the, uh, there, they did, Ubisoft did a, uh, Assassin's Creed Symphonic Adventure that toured around the globe 
until recently. I think they had their final performance semi-recently. And it was, like, I unfortunately wasn't able to see it, but uh, I've, uh, they put up a recording of one of their final performances. Um, and it's, it was perfection. Did I watch it yet? I, I did watch it. I'd already watched it by the time I talked to you about it. Almost there, just two more. Most complex music box ever, absolutely. It's also up there with one, some of the most complex uh, vault locks in video game history. Right up there with Resident Evil Shadow Locks. And Jacob's there. <laughs> I don't suppose they've got another suit back there, do you? That one looks a bit tight for me. And you would look a right tit in it. <laughs> Evie. God, I love her. <laughs> He'd look a right tit in it, as opposed to a left tit. The ages. All right, now then, regression log. We have all of these. Inventory, outfits. Hmm. 
<laughs> the Aegis. Could it be the garments of Minerva, member of the first civilization? It is believed Minerva wore this protective outfit while in combat. There's a reason people believe she was the goddess of war. Decreases melee damage received by 10%, decreases ranged damage received, and increases cane sword damage. Hell yeah. Gorgeous. Look at it. I wonder if it'll change colors. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> I'm not allowed to diet. I love that it gives her kind of this shimmery, uh, staticky kind of look because, you know, it's a magical outfit. Well, it's technology, but it is magical. Now, there is a cape that matches it. Uh, I don't think I have it unlocked yet. Um, yeah, no, it's this one, the Cloak of Victory. Um, I need to, I need to progress further in the storyline to get that one. But, uh, computer magic. Right? It does feel like a shame to wear a dirty industrial lunch. And she's so, <laughs> Queen says she's so savage and I love it. Absolutely. Uh, Minerva, <laughs> wait, isn't that a Pokemon? Uh, no, Minerva as in the, uh, Greek goddess? Um, although the name may have been stolen for a video game, it's been stolen a few times. Minerva, I choose you. Um, and yes, and I do agree that dang, it is stunning. But yeah, once I get this cape, the ensemble will be complete. Um, there's also a secret cape, but anyway. Um... You know the true magic about this outfit? The true, true magic about this outfit is I could be running around in London in the muck and it won't get dirty. All right, so that is complete. Uh, now that we've completed that, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go start a gang war. 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 Actually, no. I'm gonna go end a gang war. Let's be real. <laughs> All right, inventory, make sure I have current weapon. Uh-huh, yep, all right, good. Uh, it's over here. There must be something to be tried. Yep, I have all my shit. Without, without the queen, no fair. Well, I mean, if anything happened to you, that would really suck, wouldn't it? And also, I mean, technically you are here. You are here witnessing it. But hold on, let's take a second and like, appreciate <coughs> the, the detail on this outfit. <coughs> Look at that. Look at that. With the pauldron. And, oh, gorgeous. Perfection. Anyway, it's over here. Oh, bumped the mouse the wrong way.
Under and again, war. With Miss Nora gone, I'd say your chances of winning the fight have increased. But I'd still keep my eye on those blighters if I were you. You're absolutely right, Yvonne. It is, it is very similar to that with the LEDs. <clears throat> Wait a second. Okay, this is gonna bother me if I don't actually look this up. Minerva, <clears throat> Minerva is the Roman version of Athena. That's right. That's right. Minerva is the Roman version of Athena, <clears throat> goddess of wisdom and war, and other such stuff. Ah, heck, Athena. Not that Athena, Yvonne. Not the one from the other, the, from that one game that you really, really, really... <laughs> if I remember correctly, we actually do meet actual Minerva in, uh... one of the Assassin's Creed games. Something, something, something. Stray, uh, stray gods is. I almost called it stray dogs. And honestly, better title. Uh, so where was I going? Right over here. We've reached the part of the stream where I antagonize Yvonne until she like jumps in the chat and chews me out, or uh, murders me, like just appears out of thin air next to me and murders me on stream one of the two or abandons me yeah one of the, sorry that's right that's right i forgot that was the third option all right time to start another game war why do i feel like i just missed another carriage randomly exploding Miss Plum is no longer head of the Southwark Blighters, and they go into this fight leaderless. Uh, no, actually, no, because I don't live anywhere near Teddy. Um, I, I, I don't live anywhere near uh, Teddy. I am a few states away. I do go visit them occasionally, but uh, rooks have good odds. No. This borough is ours for the taking. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Evie and Jacob Fry. And as of this moment, you all work for us. Uh, I had visited her, um...
Yeah, it, what Yvonne said is 100% the truth. Um... 100% the truth. Please make sure to come um... Again. But, uh, yeah, no, I visited, I, I did last visit, uh, Teddy earlier this year, and, um, then Yvonne and her, and their boyfriend did move, in, uh, have moved in with them temporarily since then. So that might be what caused the confusion. Wait, why did I do that? That was not what I meant to do. All right, so. So, let's pop over this train hideout real quick while we figure out what we want to do next. I love how the outfit really le lets her blend into the, uh, to the Animus loading screen. Hmm. Seems a letter has come for Jacob. Solid okay. Good for putting a bit of stick about it. I have money. Let me... While I'm here, I might as well. There we go. Alright, so what do we want to do next? Um, we have the next story mission, which is right here. Uh, we have a Karl Marx memory we could do. And we, ooh, do we want to go do an investi a murder investigation? Oh, absolutely, Yvonne. Absolutely. Do we want to do a murder investigation? Okay, so here are the options. Do we want to go do a murder? <laughs> do a murder investigation? Or cause some anarchy? Yeah, Carl's uh, Carl Marx. Uh, you're you're currently in NAD, so you're probably not seeing this. But uh, let me type it into chat. We should be back from break uh <clears throat> from ads yeah uh there's charles darwin charles dickens um carl marx uh young arthur conan doyle um in fact actually now that we're back from ads i'm just gonna come over here and do this so hey i'm gonna borrow your cart don't hate me in fact hate me all you want i don't care because I have a murder to go solve. Go on. Oh, sorry, Omnibus. My bad. And then immediately does it again. all of London oh well sort of sort of 
the main the hub main city of London, the downtown basically. Uh <laughs> I still have the Strand and Westminster to actually finish conquering, but yes. And yeah, Yvonne, I know, I don't want to talk about it. It's fine. <laughs> In fact, here they are. Good old young Artie. Good old Artie. A tragedy in the park. Another chance to sort out a diabolical conundrum. One that I'll turn into a one a penny read for Perlock Publishing. And the kid was Sir Ar was Arthur Conan Doyle. Ah, uh, yes, this was before ethics. As if ethics have you know ever been a thing that has you know actually been practiced by capitalists. What ethics? No. All right, I guess I should inspect the, inspect the corpse. Immediately stands on the corpse. <clears throat> Prudence Brown, a young woman with identifying papers, stabbed many times in highly in a in oh my goodness, in highly violent manner. Uh, wounds indicate a left-handed attacker. Prudence Brown stabbed brutally, left-handed attacker. Alright, there's, um, thing here. Exactly! You got, sometimes you gotta stand on the pelvis and break the pelvis in order to solve the murder. <clears throat> the park, a packet. A small paper packet containing powdered medication. Stamped Dr. Trevor Alton with an now address. Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. Dr. Alton's address. And there's another packet back here. A handbag. Uh, contains an appointment diary for 10 a.m. Trevor Park. Or 10 a.m. Trevor Park, noon, Gilbert, his house. The address is indicated in the back of the agenda. Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. All right, what else we got? Oh, we got a blood trail. Found the murder weapon. The bloodied murder weapon. It is a standard kitchen knife. All right, that's four of four clues found in the park. Um. Let's go to the doctor's place first. here but increasingly began to stop by socially okay so she was meeting dr alton in the park was she my understanding was that she was engaged to someone in any case the good doctor could do better in my opinion perhaps now he will the millennial purse the millennial pause yep I don't know any of Dr. Alton's other patients. I 
I don't know any of Dr. Alton's other patients. Okay. Uh, how do I get up to the third level? Ah, stairs. The NPC, uh, that was Claire Knight. They said her name was... This is Dr. Trevor Alton. <clears throat> oh my god, Prudence! How horrible! I was about to propose. But I don't understand. She and I didn't have a meeting arranged today. It is true that we sometimes meet in the park, but there was no arrangement for this morning. Interesting. That's very odd indeed. Prudence was a patient here, but wasn't given this prescription. There's no reason that she should be carrying such a packet. Hmm. All right, let's let's do some sniffing around. Yes, Kise. Uh, personal note, Doctor. I do hope that our professional relationship does not preclude a closer rapport. Yours most sincerely, Miss Claire Knights. And Bucky's dust. Baxter's medical file. Baxter now appears to be totally reliant on the treatment. He consumes far more than the prescribed dosage and is constantly demanding more. In addition, he has become alarmingly aggressive, going so far as to assault me physically. Furthermore, he has recklessly seduced several women over the past few weeks. I should return and find out about this. Now, Dr. Trevor Alton has a cut cheek. As you can see here, it says cut cheek. Uh, Baxter is aggressive treatment, violent seducer, right-handed writing. So assuming that was written by the doctor, he's right-handed, not left-handed. That probably excludes him from being a uh, closer rapport. Uh, uh, um, a suspect. Now. This is absolutely some Sherlock snooping. So, so, actually what's interesting about this game, they included these, uh, murders to solve because they wanted to be able to claim that Arthur Conan Doyle was inspired by meeting Jacob and Evie and thus created the character of Sherlock Holmes based off of their deductive abilities, which comes from the in-game uh, uh, in game ability of their eagle vision. Dr. Alton's office, Mr. Shelby's medical file. Since using this treatment, Mr. Shelby has overcome his paralyzing t timidity with astonishing success. However, owing to the effects I've seen of the same drug on Mr. Baxter, I feel obliged to terminate Mr. Shelby's use altogether. Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. Mr. Shelby, paralyzing timidity, stopped treatment, right-handed writing. So whoever wrote these two reports probably uh, are probably the same person. Prudence's medical file. Here we go. Miss Brown came to see me, oppressed by grave anxiety concerning her recent engagement. This was not a medical concern, but nevertheless, I prescribed a mild sedative. However, she has since embarked on an irregular relationship with someone I shall not name. The situation is intolerable. And since that was not Dr. Alton's writing that, otherwise he would probably have not mentioned that. It's probably written by Claire, which makes it right-handed writing. Which means that Claire probably wrote all of the reports. 
which means she's probably not left-handed. But we do have more things to uh, investigate. There is one more clue, and we have some more questions to ask. And beyond that, we have Gilbert's house to go to. Doctor's notes. Dear Miss Knight, which is Claire Knight he's addressing, I would ask you to please suspend Mr. Shelby's prescription. This note, as well as all medical entries in the office, appear to be written by a right-handed man, according to the doctor's note. Right-handed writing. So possibly the doctor was right-handed as well. Now, to be fair, just because the attacker attacked left-handed, that does not necessarily mean that they are actually left-handed. You know? They could have swapped hands or something. But... All right, this is Mr. Shelby, the one who's, this is Mr. Shelby whose uh, treatment has been suspended. I'm quite angry, actually. I was having such terrific results. I felt like a new man, much more vigorous and outgoing. But the doctor has ended the prescription altogether for no reason. No reason that you're aware of, my good sir. My guy. All right. Let's ask her about... Dr. Baxter. Alton makes house calls to see oh. him. Baxter doesn't come oh. into the office. I make up the prescriptions and he picks them up at noon when I'm away at lunch. Wait, Dr. Alton that? makes house calls to see him. Baxter doesn't come into the <laughs> office. I make up the prescriptions and he picks them up at noon when I'm away at lunch. So it's entirely possible Baxter is not necessarily a real man. Mr. Baxter apparently attacked the doctor yesterday. It was after <clears throat> hours, but the doctor did have a cut on his cheek. Poor man. So apparently Mr. Baxter is the reason that Alton has a cut on his face. Unfortunate incident. One of my patients became overexcited. You appreciate, I'm sure, that I cannot discuss the condition of any of my patients. Mm. Okay. Fine then. Off to Gilbert's house we go. Me up when Claire gets implicated. You really just don't like Claire. <laughs> Choose motive and close access. Oh, we have two who don't trust Claire. Okay. Well, let's talk to Gilbert and see what we can find out here. Gilbert was the other person that she was to that uh, our victim was to meet. Gilbert Higgins, what do you know about Higgins our victim? And I are engaged to be married. I'm desperate ah. to see her. She should be by any moment. She had something important to tell me. I'm worried she's going to break off the engagement. Uh oh. She hadn't. Guy's yeah, beard is pretty sus. <laughs> yeah, so he doesn't know she's dead. Uh, sorry to break the news to you, my guy. Um, but also, he's worried she's going to break off the um, engagement, which we know she was going to because she was being apparently involved in an, an untoward relationship with someone. Prudence has been so <clears throat> distant lately. I believe she has a misplaced affection for her doctor, the cat. I would make a much more appropriate husband, and the wedding is planned. Hmm. 
Okay. Prudence's fiance. He doesn't appear to be any kind of injured or anything. Um, we have one clue to find, and it's upstairs. I still love that the beard was sus. Deposit is non refundable! Five, nine. <clears throat> Gilbert's house. Letter from Prudence. Dearest Gilbert, I have something of the utmost importance to tell you. I shall call tomorrow at noon. Please, excuse me. Please, dear Gilbert, know that whatever I have to say, I will always hold you in the highest esteem. Your Prudence. The letterhead gives Prudence's address. Break engagement, Prudence's address. The barber is the real culprit here. Yes, the barber, not of Seville, but of London. Time to go to the victim's home. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't Watch mean to spook you by going. jumping out of this, by tr literally dropping out of the sky without you real seeing it coming. <gasps> Casually dropping out of the sky. Don't worry about it. How far away is Prudence's house? Quite far. So the park where she was murdered, Dr. Alton's office and Gilbert's house is quite the distance from where she lived, relatively. Absolutely. Ba -ba 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 -dum. Ba -ba -da -ba -dum. Okay, I'll stop. We did the uh, Barber of Seville in the previous game. Uh, as Yvonne may remember. Um, in the previous uh, game, there was a uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. They also had mis uh, murders to solve. And one of them was the Templar Barber of London Town. Um, and one of them was uh, a group of uh, a theater troupe that uh, the lead was killed in when they were getting ready to perform the Barber of Seville. All right, so this must be Prudence's home. All right, so front door's locked, so, you know, we're gonna do the Batman thing. Not this level. Not this level. Here we go. All right, there's a suspect and two clues to find. Well, we found the two clues. Let's go find the suspect first. Where's the suspect? Suspect? Where's the sussy pecked? The queen may remember it too because uh, she was in the she was watching when we were doing the Barber of Seville. Where's the sussy pact? Maybe I have to look at the papers before I can actually have a proper suspect. Let's see here. Prudence's house. <clears throat> An unsent letter to Dr. Alton. Dearest Trevor, I must tell you that this evening something unsettling occurred. After our tete-a-tete -tete in the park, I set off uh, for home, all the while thinking of you. But suddenly a young woman appeared and began to berate me in the street never ceasing to shout insults and shameful allegations involving someone named Baxter. 
Isn't that the patient you have had such trouble with? Oh my dear, I... Uh, oh my dear, I, am ma I managed to slip away, but it was so terribly upsetting. But now I see that it is too late to post this, and I will see you tomorrow in any case, my love. Interesting. And what is thus? Prudence's Diaries. Several entries stand out. <clears throat> I hold Gilbert in the greatest esteem, but I simply cannot imagine marrying uh, marriage and all it entails. I've seen so little of the world. I have begun to see a doctor in an attempt to calm my nerves and concentrate my mind. Dr. Alton is kind. Uh, hold on. Uh, I've seen so little of the world and I've, you know, Dr. Alton is kind and gentle and the solicitous, solicitous manner with which he listens is as beneficial as any medicine. And oh, what a rapturous night. The timid Dr. Trevor Alton has surprising depths. We had a chance encounter in the park whereupon he began to speak to me with such intensity and passion, I was quite swept up. Soon his ardent kisses took my breath away. Could it be that I have found love at last? And what then of my engagement to Gilbert? My feelings for Trevor, it seems so silly to call him Dr. Alton now, uh, are as strong as ever, but mixed with concern. He has become moody, even tormented. He complains of his experimental treatment and of his patience. I have told him that I have plan uh, that I plan to break things off with Gilbert. <clears throat> Trevor and I are to meet in the park this morning. Is a proposal is a proposal is a proposal is in the offing. Weird. If he does propose, oh please let it be so. I shall go directly to Gilbert and break it off with him. A swift, sharp break is best for everyone. Yeah, same with Bones, too. All right, now, there's supposed to be a suspect. Aha! Aha! Where are you at, bitch? There you are. What's up? I saw her kissing my man in the park, didn't I? I followed her to the street yesterday, but lost her. I'll come every day if need be, until I catch her again. Oh. That trollop better promise to let him alone, or I'll give her what for. <laughs> Saw Prudence kissing her man in the park. He's all mine, I tell you. All the girls want a bit of Baxter, but they can't have him. You ask him yourself, he lives just that way. All right, Baxter's house. I think I, re I think I know what's going on here. Anybody have any suspicions while we're en route to our final destination? Oh, I didn't, hold on, I didn't scan her. Have we met Baxter yet? Uh, no, we've not seen him in person yet at, that we know of. Uh, he was one of Dr. Alton's patients. He was the one who was on the same medica medical treatment as the, uh, as the guy whose treatment was immediately stopped. A strong-willed woman. Lulu is her name. Okay. Um, Jekyll and Hyde, question mark? That's what I'm wondering, too. Uh, if we got, if, uh, Trevor, so... Mr. Shelby was being treated for being timid. And his... Willy Wonka, final answer. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Mr. Shelby was being treated for being timid. However, his treatment was broken off after another patient of the doctor 
undergoing the same treatment uh, was going poorly um, and resulting in aggressive behavior. Um, and that other patient is this Baxter fellow. Um, he he's the one who caused the cut on uh, Dr. Alton's face and a few other things like that. Uh, the nurse has never actually seen Baxter. Crucially, the, the nurse has never actually seen Baxter. Um, the only one who has seen Baxter is the doctor and this Lulu chick that we just talked to. Um, cause Prudence, our victim, has never heard of, uh, had never heard of Baxter before. Uh, except as in the concept of one of the doctor's patients. And... Etc, etc, etc. So, anyway, up to... Baxter's house. Is it this level? Yes. Baxter's house. Scattered papers. She plans to break her engagement because of you. I won't have it. I shall marry her myself. At least that way she will remain a respectable woman. Written by a right-handed man. Scattered papers. I can't extinguish your life, so I shall extinguish hers. Written by a left-handed man. There's a spot of blood on the note. I always get what I want. It is my due. Written by a left-handed man. She means nothing to you. You are a monster of my own making. Written by a right-handed man. You are nothing but a burden to me, a pathetic sniveling burden. If only I could be rid of you. Written by a left-handed man. Or just twin brothers. I mean, you know. <clears throat> paper packets. Many empty paper packets. They have a residue of powder oh, on no. them. I didn't ask about this. A collection of kitchen knives identical to the one found on the crime scene. And one is missing. Let me go see if Lulu has ad strike. No! It'll be fine. One minute. <clears throat> All right, so Lulu doesn't have anything further to say because she's not yellow. And we're back. Welcome back, everybody, from the ad break. Um... <clears throat> so I went and checked with uh, Lulu, uh, who was the, the strong-willed woman who called Prudence out for kissing her man in the park. Um, <clears throat> and uh, she didn't have anything further to say. Um, 
Let's see here. What else was there? The, uh... Oh, we found a set of matching kitchen knives with one missing. Matching to the kitchen knife we found in the park. The what we know is the murder weapon. At Baxter's house. So Baxter is definitely the villain. We just need to know who he is. Now, the fiancé has more to say. I've never heard of such a man. All right, so Gilbert doesn't know anything about a man named Baxter. Uh, go check out the park, see if there's anything new in here. <clears throat> Probably not. Yeah, there's nobody to talk to about anything. Just the corpse and the murder weapon and other evidence. Okay, so that takes us back to Dr. Alton's office. All right, in through the window. Intruder window. All right, does he have anything more to say? Mr. Shelby does not have more to say. The nurse does. Doctor does not. All right, let's go talk to Claire. Yvonne's bitter rival. Bitter hated en enemy. medicine was developed by Dr. Alton specifically for one of our patients, Mr. Shelby, but he's been using it for another patient as well. All right. So we have all the evidence we need that we could possibly gather. We've asked every question. We've found every clue. <clears throat> What do we think happened? We know that Prudence was engaged to, to uh, Gilbert Higgins. However, she was anx anxious, came to the doctor. They kind of hit things off a little bit. We know that she's been dating the doctor and meeting him regularly at the park. We know that she was planning on calling off the engagement. And she thought that maybe the doctor was going to propose. We know that Mr. Shelby, this, uh, this man right here, <clears throat> was undergoing the same treatment as another man named Baxter. However, Baxter was getting increasingly aggressive and violent. Etc. 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 So, who do we think killed Prudence? Do we think that Gilbert found out that she was going to uh, uh, call off the engagement and has just been playing dumb and thus murdered her? Do we think that? Uh, Miss Claire Knight it has been, uh, shall we say, uh, wanting to work late with the doctor. <clears throat> Do we think that Lulu, the girl who was supposedly dating Baxter, who Baxter's my man. Do we think Lulu killed Prudence for Baxter? Or do we think the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde situation Or, you know, off the wall, do we think Prudence maybe stabbed herself? 
No. Fair. Fair to Yvonne. Uh, Nat says Jekyll and Hyde. And also Jekyll and Hyde for Yvonne. Ah, the queen is typing. What doth the queen declare? Ah. Okay, queen. Good night. Good night. Uh, thanks for popping in for as long as you could. Sleep well. The queen doth bid all adieu. Oh, God, it's true. I couldn't help myself. The powder unleashed a creature within me. He seduced the innocent Prudence and then killed her to prevent us from marrying. It's too, too horrible. I knew something was amiss with the medical powder, but didn't understand until you found those papers. Well done. Well done. Well done, everyone. <clears throat> the case of the conflicted courtship. Dr. Trevor Alton's experimental medication seemed to be so successful on one of his patients that he tried it himself and created a monster. Going under the name of Baxter, this second drug-altered personality lived a wild, scandalous life, seducing women as he went. The unsuspecting Prudence Brown, believing him to be Dr. Alton, fell in love with the passionate Baxter. Meanwhile, Baxter continued his seductions, which included the possessive Lulu, who later followed Prudence, planning to threaten her. Horrified by Baxter's actions, Dr. Alton resolved to marry Prudence in order to save her reputation. Baxter, however, would not have his freedom curtailed in any way, and, man and arranged, to, uh, arranged a meet uh, with Miss Brown in the park, <clears throat> where he viciously murdered her. A crime for which Dr. Alton will pay for the price. It is very meta, and I adore, I adore this game so much for these things. All right, so we have, ooh, we have another murder up in Whitechapel. And we have one up here too. Too better we don't have better. Uh, too bad we don't have. Oh god. Too bad we don't have better mental care in this time or in the present day. Um. All right. Let's do. Since we have several more murders, let's do uh, the Carl's Mark. Carl Marx memory. We also have a train robbery. Hmm. Yes, that's fair. That's fair, Yvonne. And yes, Queen. Not nice for the girl. Quite sucks for all the women involved in that situation. And it sucks for Dr. Alton, who just wanted to be a bit more, you know, assertive. Oh, well, I'm... Okay, I'm not going to catch up to that train. Ooh, I might, actually. Nah, not on foot. Nah, I shouldn't try. <laughs> we absolutely should get rid of the word hysterical. And a lot of other words that we use in common parlance including ones I am very guilty of using on a regular basis. Ah! Damn! There's been a murder! A murder! Someone call IXII!
A grieving worker plots violent revenge involving some Templar explosives. My poor friend, Frank Morris. His son dropped dead of exhaustion after finishing an 18-hour shift. Frank is consumed by grief. He blames the government for refusing to protect the rights of the worker. I can't blame him for his rage, but I fear his actions have gone too far. He plans to steal a shipment of nitroglycerin and use it to attack the Houses of Parliament. Killing people and destroying property solves nothing. Democracy is the only road to socialism. Please, stop him before he gets himself or anyone else killed. I expect he's on his way into the city of London now. Damn it. Well, there goes my carriage. <laughs> Go get him, horse. You got this. I was just about to point that out to you, Nat. Um, Who the hell? Who are you? A friend of Mr. Karl Marx. Now, please, let me focus. You tell Marx that I don't need his help or yours. Atta girl. Slowly now. What do you expect me to do? There Even God will find a kick once too often. I don't like being told what to do. trapped in here unless you ascend and deal with them. Oh, 
Oh, damn, they're ragdolling. You. Not a bit. I doubt their designs on the explosive. Oh. Well, we kind of got run over a few times, and uh, apparently the Templars got away with the explosives, even though they got stuck right, right there, quite literally right there. Ah, oh, this game is janky, and I love it. All right. Uh, have another Karl Marx right here. Ow. All right, where's the nearest shop? Not. There's not one. Okay, fine. <clears throat> An explosive end. Frank Morris has found the Templar's stash of explosives and will stop at nothing to acquire it. They're moving the shipment, but we must go now. There's a carriage on the next corner. If we hide within, they'll drive us right to it. It's time you went home. I'll hide in the carriage alone. Home? Back to a cold and cheerless house where I'll wear black gloves and sport a weed on my hat for a year. Then I'll return to the factory like a small cog in the great wheel of capital. No, I want justice. I must have those explosives. I grieve with you, but would your wife want to see your hands stained with the blood of so many? I am trying to build a better world to ensure that no one suffers what my son did. Pray tell me, friend, how much blood do you consider that to be worth? He says to a literal assassin. I'll keep those ones alive until they take me to our destination. I think you're right. That is definitely part of it. some kind of peace. Now to destroy the crates! No one is getting their hands on this hellfire! Can I have my mouth? My mouse please?
Are you sure? Mr. Morris, I see. I was afraid it would come to this. He was a good man, but even the best of us can lose our way when blinded by grief. Still, I thank you for preventing a greater tragedy. All right, yet another marks up here. a fax travel location near it Florida nearer yes the music is always so intense and uh I mean dead tired in bed uh barely able to move and yet talking college level linguistic society uh, sociology I mean Anybody who knows you is like, yeah, that tracks. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Protect Karl Marx while he gives a speech. I'm so relieved to have found you. I fear my upcoming meeting is going to be disrupted. Strike breakers, maybe, or police spies. Ruffians who fear the march of progress. Fear not, Mr. Marx. I'll look after you. 
I worry that any agitation will incite terrible violence, so please remove troublemakers without attracting any attention. Wunderbar. Thank you. I must prepare, but I will see you inside shortly. Hide a body in a hiding spot and don't kill any policemen. But I shall give him one anyway. He has sacrificed so much in the hope that we may all benefit. Please give a warm reception to Mr. Immediately failed the mission. Immediately failed the mission. Uh, okay. <laughs> United workers! The man we're here to see needs no introduction. But I shall give him one anyway. He has sacrificed so much in the hope that we may help him. for your most generous welcome. I come before you today an industrial Europe. In the last two decades there has been an unheard of development of industry and unprecedented increase in Where is a hiding spot? Well, these are facts to be celebrated by the profit. They didn't. They already passed the one thing. Service for the workers of London. I'm confident the reforms we seek cannot be far over the hmm. horizon. I don't suppose you'd formally join the Workers' Party. I'm not much for politics. He's not much for anything that requires deep thought. Does that mean you'll join, Comrade Evie? I'm afraid I have other responsibilities. Honorary memberships, perhaps. You don't give up, do you? We seem to have that in common. Auf Wiedersehen, my friends. Evie is incredibly harsh, but to be fair, Jacob deserves it. <laughs> uh, 
All right. So let's see here. We have these two up here. Let's let's go solve another murder. Would you like to solve a murder? <laughs> Close enough. This is right. Nice to see you. Sir, did you know that you have a twin immediately behind you? Yeah, they very much nail that uh, Sherlock Holmesian era industrial revolution uh, London. <clears throat> Anything I should know about? Oh, damn, he nice just gave work. me 5,000 pounds. Oh, walk right past them. What's up, kid? Solve the case of the missing Detective Murphy. Time to solve the case of the missing Detective Murphy. Ah, this is one that's most promising. An important detective is missing. Skullduggery is surely afoot. Solve it, and I'll write it up quick as you please. Now, I need to point something out. Hold on, what's this? Oh, right, I did. I did get that, didn't I? Um. Oh, I won't let me swap to Jacob because I just started a thing. Jacob has a uh, basically a Sherlock Holmes outfit. He's got the deer stalker and all of that type of, like, you know, type of thing. It's pretty great. Though it very much does not fit him like it fits Evie, who is quite the intellectual. Now, so, an interesting thing about Arthur Conan Doyle. He can't go home. Because his home is with the guy who's dragging him around for these murders. And yeah, let me let me pull up the database real quick. Um, I won't read the whole thing. I'm just going to put it up for anybody who wants to skim it. Tells Arthur to run. <laughs> I mean, you kind of should. It's um something Raymond, I think his name was. All right. Oh, Detective Aberline. Hello, my friend. What can you He's tell me about our missing detective? The whole station is out <clears throat> looking for him as we speak. Ironically, he came here on an investigation himself. Seems several people oh. have gone missing in this part of town. 
missing people in this part We've of town? We've had reports of missing people over the last few months. Detective Murphy is just the most recent and the only one who's anybody to speak of. Okay. Flower shop. Joanna assists the florist. The florist? The florist. Miss Joanna, you look a little alarmed. Uh, but what can you tell me about Detective Murphy? I saw Murphy? him going into the barber shop when I was on my way to work. A barber shop, you say? A barber shop, you say? Huh? A barber shop, you say? In this kind of neighborhood, people come and go. Barber of, the Barber of Seville uh, intensifies in the background. <clears throat> Flower shop. Manure. A sack of manure for plants. Uh, examination shows that small bits of bone are mixed in. One appears to be a human knuckle. I should go back uh -oh. and ask about this. Flower shop. Woman's jacket. Made of soft brush leather. Decorated with diamond shaped holes. Leather bag, made of pale leather. On the bottom is a fading green image. It appears to be a cross of some sort. Diamond shaped holes. Diamond shaped holes. The florist with diamond shaped holes. All right. Human knuckle. All right. An what can you tell me about indeed. Detective Murray? He spent a fair amount of time in here, poking around. Okay. Stephen Bean. Definitely not related to Sean Bean. Uh, he's the florist. Okay. Missing people. Town just seem to vanish. It is mysterious. <coughs> Excuse George me. George delivers that to us. It's amazing. The flowers just grow and grow. This just in. Flowers are cannibals. Well, technically no, because they would that would require them to eat themselves and other flowers. So carnivorous. There we go. Tell me about this George. Sweet boy. Constantly giving my assistant gifts, a jacket, a handbag, and so on. You mean these handbags and jackets that have a bunch of diamond holes in them? Made of leather? Let's go back and talk to uh, Miss Joanna about George. George is my sweetheart. I think he plans to propose marriage soon. Maybe even today. Little Shop of Horrors. Maybe. All right, let's go talk. Let's go check out the bakery. Shifting gears from the florist to the baker. Bills. Bills paid. Several from George for meat delivery. 
it seems Mrs. Moffat <laughs> Moffat pays promptly and gets a good deal from George. Is it people? I feel like it's people. Miss Moffat, baker of meat pies. Mrs. Moffat? Is, are your meat pies people? You kind of have to tell us if, it, if they're people. He was in here asking about missing people, but a meat pie he did. Stayed and chatted for a few minutes, then headed off to the barber. I'm told that some people have gone missing, but I don't know anything about it. Crate of meat with no label, and this meat smells a little odd. That's unusual. You only now realize that it's literally Fleet Street? <laughs> George delivers meat from the pies. Lovely lad. I pay on delivery. I believe he picks it up from a local butcher shop. All right, take your time, Nat. Uh, do the thing you're supposed to do. And you know, hot chocolate's always nice. All right, let's go to the butcher shop since it's right here. John Tynes, the butcher. You mean the annoying bloke nosing around? I told him to sod off. I pride myself on the quality of the beef I sell. Somebody selling cheap around here, though, my sales have dropped off. George? I don't know him, George. This George does not work for the butcher. He is the reason why the butcher is, uh... Shall we say losing business? Because it's people. All right, let's go to the leather shop before we hit the barber shop. All right, we got two things upstairs and. Tobias Jeffers, leather worker. He came in asking lots of questions. I believe I answered them to his satisfaction. I suppose there are a few people I haven't seen in a while. Why would you want to know about him? Stupid boy. He does deliver tan leather on occasion, but I really have very little to do with him. Hmm. Sure you do. Suspicious. Now, before I go into the barber shop or go back to the tanner and um, check upstairs, uh, I want to do a thing that I just realized I never actually did. Uh, florist, okay. Baker of meat pies, that's all she says. Oh, wow, those people just spawned in right in front of me. me people you are all very much in my way <clears throat> I mean you're not wrong but also I'm pretty sure there's a law not to mention the uh ethics of it morality is a big question too <sighs> a collection of sharp knives and strong thick needles also several owls Owls, owls. I don't remember how that's pronounced. Some of which would be used to punch distinctively shaped holes. A 
leather scrap, a sheet of leather with a diamond shaped hole in it. This is before ethics. Ish. Ish. It's before ish ethics. Uh, cause ethics have technically been around since ancient Greece. Cause you know, philosophy. But, but it was before there were certain ethics that were enforced by law. And, but I'm pretty sure the whole thing of cannibalism and all of that, it has, is a, it has been, has been a thing for a while. What we got here? <laughs> Yvonne, do you see this person's name? God, I hope I don't get sued for doing the Feeny call. Yeah, I gave him a trim. He asks no ended questions. When I cut his hair, I notices a tattoo right at the base of his neck. A green Celtic cross, it was. You're right. Several people have disappeared over the past months. Some of them were customers of mine. Okay, so. So, so, he said that the, that the detective had a tattoo on the back of his neck. It was a green cross, a bit faded, kind of like the one we found on the handbag that was gifted to Joanna from George. George was in here earlier, getting an haircut. He wanted to look nice for his girl. He's been seeing Joanna from the flower shop for some time now. Said he's finally saved up enough money to pop a question. Razors, sharpened barber's razors. Several drops of blood. Someone has stepped in it, leaving a trail. I should return and find out about this. I'm trying to quit drinking. Sometimes my hand shakes when I'm given a shave. Who stepped here, George? Footprints? George's house, a ledger, a list of pickups and drop-offs. The pickups are mysterious. The drop-offs are meat delivered to bakery, manure to florist, leather to, to Tobias, leather delivered to leather worker. Totals show a thriving business, but the supplier gets most of the money. Nothing like Johnny Depp, you want his, your money back? He's not Sweeney Todd, he's Feeney Sod. George's house diary. A diary entry indicating that George is becoming increasingly suspicious concerning his deliveries. Now that I have enough set aside, 
to propose to, jo to Joanna. I've written to a detective about my suspicions regarding the true source of the products I deliver. Poor Todd looks nothing like Johnny Depp. So George is just the middleman. He is not our vi he's not our murderer. However, there is a corpse here. George's house, George's body. George is very recently dead. His chest has a puncture wound, a diamond-shaped hole. All right, do I have anywhere I'm missing? Eight streets, back to the flower shop. Back to the flower shop. Da, da, da. Poor George. Good old George. Joanna, my dear. George, I hoped he'd stop by. I want to see his new haircut. He must be at his house. Oh, I do hope he proposes soon. Poor woman. <sighs> well. It's the barber, right? It's the barber. It's the barber. The barber is the barber. Is the murderer of the barber is the murderer? The bur mur murder, 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 bar 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 One thing I need to check first. Where's the leather shop right here? I do also need to check one other thing because it does kind of feel a little bit too obvious, you know? goes to the bakery manure to florist hmm I mean, the leather worker. Is the thought that crossed my mind because of the diamond shaped holes. And that's why I went back to the leather workers place. The leather shop, because I wanted to see if it said anything about a missing oops, wrong side about a missing owl or all or whatever they're called. And it didn't say anything about a missing, a missing diamond shaped thing. I 
What does it, what does it say? A collection of sharp knives and strong thick needles. Also several owls. Owls, owls, whatever. Some of which would would be used to punch distinctively shaped holes. It doesn't say one of them is a diamond. It doesn't say that there's a diamond one missing. I would feel much better if we had essentially the murder weapon. Could be in his shop. We're in his shop. And he doesn't have any other answers for us. Why would you want to know about him? Stupid boy. He does deliver tan leather on occasion, but I really have very little to do with him. No, I'm in uh, Tobias Jeffers's. There, over there is George's house. I'm in. I'm in the leather worker shop. Barber shop's right there. Fleet Street flower shop, butcher shop, bakery. So let's 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 try to work this out. Cause like people go have been going missing from Fleet Street. Uh, the flower shop's been getting manure with human bones in it. Butcher shop's been getting human meat, or uh, and uh, butcher shop's been being undercut by people selling human meat to the bakeries. <clears throat> and leather workers been getting leather. And George, it doesn't make sense to me for George to be delivering leather to the leather shop if the leather worker was the killer. And of course, there's an ad. Yeah, George, in, in his thing, George has been delivering leather as well as leather products, as well as meat and manure. Basically all the things, the manure is the ground, is, is combined with the ground up bones and anything that's not put in the meat or the leather. The leather is of course the skin, the hide of the victims. And the meat is everything, is, you know, everything else essentially and that's been going to he's been sending the he's been taking the creative meat to the bakery to undercut the the butcher he's been taking the leather to the leather worker right right but he's been taking leather products to Joanna. Like this leather bag that has 
a cross of some sort faded on the bottom. <clears throat> Which we know is the detective's tattoo. Um, and this jacket. Razors, blood, leather working tools, leather scrap, a sheet of leather with a diamond hole, a shaped hole in it. In George's leather ledger, he says, it doesn't say anything where he's picking up stuff. But the drop-offs are meat delivered to the bakery, manure to the florist, leather to Tobias. Tobias is the leather worker. He's the leather uh, shop. And leather delivered to leather worker. I don't know. We know he was saving up to propose to Joanna. And he was written and he con contacted Detective Murphy about his suspicions regarding the true source of the products he delivered. <clears throat> All right, let's go talk to uh, the leather worker again. Hey, buddy. Um. He came in asking lots of questions. I believe I answered them to his satisfaction. Detective Mercy, uh, Detective Murphy came in asking questions. I suppose there are people. people I haven't seen in a while. Why would you want to know about him? Stupid boy. He does deliver tan leather on occasion, but I really have very little to do with him. Yeah, see, he, uh, he did deliver... Oh, he did deliver tanned leather to him from the leather worker. So basically he takes let hide to the leather worker who then tans it and, t and then he delivers it to Tobias. Okay. This is the hardest one I've had to solve yet. I could Google it if I needed to. Okay, I see a tie. Hi. I don't think this adds up. It really does. It feels like there's something missing. Yeah, like because there's only one leather worker, which is Tobias, right? Or at least, the, at least is the leather shop. You know, we don't know if there's a leather worker, like that's separate. Um, but, he does mention the leather worker and then Tobias separately, but why? Why can't we like find the leather worker? If, like, basically, and, who's tanning the hides? That's the whole thing. Whoever is yeah. the hides would have noticed the tattoo. Yeah, and that's that's why I feel like something's missing. But we know that we found all of the locations because it's when I look at the at the mission marker, all it says is make an accusation. Yeah. It, it wouldn't say that if I was missing a location. I feel like being sought is just too obvious. Does that make sense? I, I have that feeling too, you know, like I kind of want them to, I don't know. So <sighs> Frederick Aberline, which is our friend, the police, the uh, police inspector or whatever his rank is. Um, mm -hmm. He stated that Murphy came to this area to investigate the disappearances of people, which we know. Mm -hmm. uh, he also notes that there, there have been reports of various missing people 
which includes Detective Murphy. So, so that's all we got from Frederick Aberline. Um, okay. John Tynes, who is the butcher, claims that he was annoyed by Detective Murphy's questioning and told him to go away. He says his meat, he is proud of the quality of the meat he sells and notes that someone has been selling cheaper meat in the neighborhood given that his sales have dropped. And he claims mm -hmm. not to have known George at all. Mm -hmm. Joanna, the assistant to the florist and George's sweetheart, um, claims she saw Detective Murphy going into the barber shop, appears unconcerned about the reports of the missing people, and states that George is her sweetheart and that she expects him to propose marriage. And when I brought George up again, she regrets that she hasn't seen George's new haircut yet and surmises that he must be at his house, which is where we found him dead. Mrs. Moffat, the baker, claims that Detective Murphy asked about missing people, bought a pie, and chatted for a few minutes, then left for the barbers. She claims to not have known anything about the missing people, and has stated that George delivers the meat from the local butcher, who we talked to, and know that the local butcher has nothing to do with the meat that George delivers. And she pays on delivery. Hmm. Even Bean, no relation to Sean Bean, is the florist. Um, he claims Detective Murphy investigated the shop. Um, he agreed that people seemed to have been disappearing. Um, when asked him about the manure that had a knuckle bone in it, he claimed that the manure was delivered by George and stated that the flowers respond very well to it, which historically is true with dead humans. Mm -hmm. Um... George, when asked about George, he claims that George gives gifts to his assistant, Joanna, including a leather jacket and a leather handbag. That leather handbag being the one that has the faded tattoo of, uh, that was, um, Detective Murphy's. Mm -hmm. Feeny Sod. Feeny! <laughs> um, he claimed he trimmed Detective Murphy's hair and noticed a tattoo of a green cross at the base of his neck. Missing people, uh, when asked about the missing people, he states that some of his, uh, some of the missing people were customers of his. Uh, when asked about George, he claimed that George came by his shop earlier in the day and was planning to propose to Joanna from the flower shop. When asked about the blood, he claims he need, he quit drinking and his hand shakes as a result, sometimes cutting a customer. And Tobias. So when that, when leather worker, Tobias, he is listed as leather worker, not just leather seller. So he's probably also the tanner. Mm -hmm. Um, Detective Murphy claims when when asked about Detective Murphy, he claims that the, de the detective came to the shop to ask questions. Um, he concedes that some people may have disappeared, and expresses disdain for George claiming that George makes occasional deliveries to the shop and claims that he has very little to do with George. I have a crazy theory. Mm-hmm. Joanna, in consort with Tobias. Unfortunately, the game only lets us accuse one. Mm. It's just Joanna is very like she is unconcerned about the people missing everyone else have at least like conceded oh man people have been missing like tobias is a close second where he's like i guess people have gone missing and like tobias i mean yes story... go ahead tobias's story doesn't hold up and he has a disdain for George, but we don't know why. Like, I mean, yes. Um, however, Joanna strikes me more as... 
love sick someone who doesn't care about anything else who's more concerned with her life than the lives of those around her maybe um that's that like when i talk to her like i can go back and and have that conversation again with her um just to confirm my god <sighs> i have to go through the leather shop to get out to the street <laughs> through the leather shop to go out to the fleet street to be able to get to the uh, the flower shop where joanna is currently located <sighs> All right. Uh, when asked about missing people, people come and go. she literally says, in this, in this kind, of kind of neighborhood, people come and go. That is it? Like, in this kind of neighborhood, so, people come and go. Like, literally everyone else and their mama has been like, ah, people have been dying or something. I recognize some people have been dying or something. Et cetera, et cetera. But, I don't know. She strikes me as yeah i mean you're right that is a little sus um though i feel like tobias is more uh is more you know it's more pointing towards tobias yeah or feeny sod where, where was the meat where was that crate of meat that smelled weird uh that was at the bakery oh okay Because it's could go it's what points you to the it's what points you to the butcher, because yeah. you ask her about the meat and she says, "Oh, I got that from the I got that from George, who delivers from the local butcher." And then you go literally like ten steps away to the local butcher, and he's like, "Yeah, no, <laughs> nah, ain't my shit." Mm -hmm. I I've forgotten what I was gonna say. It's gone. <laughs> I feel like we've come down to the to having to actually just try it, and if we fail, we fail. Cause like, okay. in the end, okay. you and I both agree that Feeny Sod is too obvious. It feels too obvious of a potential red herring. And we are, and both of us combined are much, much more suspicious about. Uh, the leather worker, Tobias, than Feeny Sod. Like, the it feels like the game wants us to pick Feeny Sod so that they can be like, ha ha, you suck, ha 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Save. It automatically saves. And if I'm wrong, then they'll just be like, no, you idiot, who else, it, it, you know? <laughs> he was coming too close to figuring out where all those people were. Hey! <laughs> they got parceled Yay! out to the baker, the florist, and me. Thanks, Yvonne. I needed somebody to puzzle that very out with. cleverly puzzled that one out. A very unpleasant oh, crime. Oh, perfect for one of Mr. Raymond's oh, penny drinks. The Fiend of Fleet Street. Even a detective can run adrift when a nefarious business is afoot. Was Detective Murphy getting too close to a secret source of raw goods? A leather worker was in the habit of doing away with local folk, splaying them, and then chopping them up. He had the skin tanned for leather, the bones ground up to sell his manure, and the bloody flesh sold to supply, uh, to supply pie shops with cheap meat. All delivered by the unwitting, car uh, the unwitting carter, George. Thus did the fiend take macabre pleasure in seeing his victims happily consumed by the citizens of Fleet Street. Good. Well, I'm going to go die now. Alright, thanks Yvonne. No problem. See ya. Rest well. Alright, 9.50. You know what? I've procrastinated enough. Let's go. Let's go kill somebody ourselves.
need this. Well done. A bad penny. someone with a hole punch? I mean, if it's what's at hand. Well, what say you? You're not gonna like it. Now, see here. I am graced with the Abilene family's robust constitution. Two pennies rob in the Bank of England. <laughs> the governor of the bank. I think I might need to sit down. There's no time for that. Bastard's probably so for that robust constitution. However you get in. I don't want to know. Of course. But do you know how I can get in? The bank is designed to protect England's gold reserves. A fortress guarded under lock and key. There is the bank manager, Mr. Osborne. Only he is allowed free access to the vault. You can spot him near the entrance. In oh, yes. One man keeps a close watch on the vault door. He watches it like a hawk. If he sees you, he's sure to see it. The guard captain, Gus Howard, knows Tupiny well. He is in on this, I'm certain. How does one kill someone with a hole Mr. punch? Fry, please, use discretion. The only way to implicate Tupiny is to catch him in the act. Do not jeopardize him no big displays this is the bank of england if you encounter any trouble i'll be in the atrium in disguise okay so how does someone kill how do you kill someone with a hole punch very carefully no um so the owls the a w l s they are these uh almost these shaped tipped blade um pokers basically they taper to a point and they usually have a shape to the edge they are sharp they're almost like a chisel they are though because they're like that long <laughs> because literally what the person does is they take the thing place the sharp end against the leather and then have this little hammer that they hammer against the end of it which then punches the hole into the leather how old how old of owls though two penny won't be leaving that vault all right so we have a stealth opportunity for the bank manager the unique kill opportunity for the head of security and assistance opportunity for the vault watcher. Find the secret passage. I need to find the secret passage. Unlocks unique kill, must know to Penny's weaknesses. Kidnap him. Okay. The 
Vault Watcher killing him will keep the vault open. He closes the vault door at the first sign of trouble. Kill him. Okay. Nice. And there's our target, Bank Manager. Easy vault access. Guards will move to let the manager inside. Kidnapped with the Bank Manager. Oh, fancy. Fitting for two pennies, too. Why can't you really just go home and leave this to the professionals? Where is Tupini? Please! I have a family. He's in the vault ogling his priceless paintings. Oh, 
Oh, I made a mistake. Is impeccable, my dear sir. I shall update our ledgers accordingly. Do you require assistance in any other way? All right, I'm gonna exit the bank, go back up top. He has split off on his own. Get off the wall. Come on. Hello, Big Ranger. Don't harm me. I'll assist you. What would you have me do? I rather fancy a private tour of the vault. Default to access guards will move to let the manager inside. Okay. You're fine. Now the question is where's the easiest place for me? to uh, get in. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Jacob. Oh, I sort of got hide. You've stolen your last shilling from the people of London. Those animals squander their savings. We are the experts in investment. 
Nothing would be built or improved. Nothing would rise above the muck without our hand guiding. No creating the future. They benefit as much as they're worth. It is their city, not yours. Without our investments, there would be no city. No, there'd be a city. It would just be, you know, free. For the path of the dead. or nothing. Murder! Murder! Thank goodness the police were saved! Arrest them all oh. for robbing the people oh. of England. The Bank of England is closed until further notice. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. We're going to be wrapping up here in a bit. The currency, a laughing stock. Inflation out of control, Tupany brutally murdered. And yet Parliament does nothing. The bill will be defeated, sir. That buffooned Israeli shall be taken care of. It has been arranged, upon my honor. Your honor carries little weight. How dare you, sir! The poor people of this city have suffered enough. Today I granted a significant rise to my staff in order to counter inflation. What? I would supply all of London if I could. Meanwhile, you sit in your club and wax poetic with promises your honor cannot pay. Your family's fortune, however. I wonder what they would offer to keep your record out of the newspapers. <clears throat> About the same as Disraeli would offer for your balls, I wager. But let's be generous. Why limit ourselves to one or the other? And we can have it all. What say you, sir? <laughs> oh? Shall I come collect? No more dallying. The halls of Parliament must be free to govern. Again! Understood? You may see yourself out. A letter for me. All right. Hello, Mr. Crawford. Time to start sequence seven. Jacob and Evie have killed two of Crawford Sterrick's agents, Philip Tupenny and Lucy Thorne, but the Templars are far from defeated. A conspiracy to assassinate the Prime Minister <coughs> takes Jacob to the Houses of Parliament. And despite Evie's triumph over Lucy Thorne, the quest for the Shroud of Eden takes a dramatic turn. Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. 
May the father, etc., etc., be. So sterix has got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. A letter. For me? All right. So now Evie's going to be running around in the city of London. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, one last thing real quick. Oh, this. We now have the master assassin outfit for uh, Mr. Jacob here. Gonna quickly upgrade some of his gear. All right. You know what? Because he's got the thing for the kukris, that's what he's gonna wield. Your knife is rather frightening. Oh wow! I just collected a lot of money. Holy shit! You see that? <laughs> All right, uh, might as well while we're here. There's his OG outfit, his gunslinger coat. There's his outdoorsman outfit, master assassin. An, un an unknown secret title. Uh, where is it? Here it is, the huntsman outfit, which is based heavily off of the stereotype of Sherlock Holmes. All right. Okay, we can't upgrade that one yet. All right, yeah, we're good. So yeah. That is where we're gonna call it. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for hanging out. Uh, thank you to um, all my friends who popped in and, you know, kept chat going. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, before we head out, you should absolutely check out Yvonne B. And um, my other friends who are all listed up here at the top. Uh, they all stream or do other things that you should absolutely check out. They're all amazing. I have even more recommendations in this link tree right down here. And speaking of this link tree... You should absolutely check it out because it's where you can find my socials, my Discord, my YouTube, all the other places where you can find me. Um, it's also where you can find my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Crimson Knight, where you, can, where you can go and support me directly if you want to uh, bypass that which is Twitch. If not, that's fine. I, I mean, it's fine either way. Uh, I will hold no, I, I hold no, like, preference really one way or the other. Um... It's just that the Patreon is very specifically uh, cash that go is go goes toward back into all of this. Um, so yeah, if you want to help me make all this better, maybe uh, throw some suggestions at me and stuff like that, you should absolutely do that through the Patreon. But only if you so if you feel like it. If not, it's fine. It's your fault. It's um, you know, it's fine either way. Anyway, uh, but yeah, we'll be back. Tomorrow, on uh, which is Tuesday, for more Tomb Raider Tuesday, where we'll be continuing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, I hope the rest of you. I hope you have a good rest of your evening or whatever time of day it is for you. Um, and in the and uh, until tomorrow, remember to have empathy, be kind, be safe, love yourselves and love everyone around you. And I'll see you all tomorrow. I love you all. Peace out.